community science program is a really awesome way for people to sink their teeth into becoming a scientist and they can learn how to observe beaver or dragonfly or salmon right in the wild right here in the city. Our community scientists actually collect data to help us understand what's happening in the creek so over time we can compile that data and we can make decisions based on what the community scientists find. So up ahead here we have a beaver dam. The beavers have been working on it all summer long so it's gotten bigger and bigger every time I've come out here. It's raised the water level above it about maybe, what, two, three feet, Lloyd? Is that what it looks like? Johnson Creek watershed is the most densely populated watershed in Oregon, and it's continuing to develop. So with urban development comes impervious surface area, like streets, roads, shopping centers, roofs, that don't allow the water to naturally percolate into the ground. So the watershed can't act like the sponge as it was designed to be by nature. all know that during a rainstorm, if you look in the gutter, there's a lot of dirty water that's running to a storm drain. A lot of those storm drains empty right into the creek. You know, in the news, we, we read and we hear a lot about climate change, and we have for many years now. And climate change really hits home here in Johnson Creek and all over streams in the Northwest. We've been seeing over the years that as the air temperature rises, the stream temperature is rising too. Streams are heating up. Salmon have very specific temperature requirements that they need to thrive and to even live. Restoring Johnson Creek to preserve and enhance salmon habitat is a big part of what we do as a council. There's some really good scientific reasons for focusing on salmon. Salmon really are at the top of the aquatic food chain. So their health really indicates the overall health for all species that use the Johnson Creek watershed. So if the conditions are right for salmon, then they're right for other organisms the mussels and insects, crawdads. If salmon are there, then the others are there. So the more we can replant and restore the tree canopy, the better shade we can provide in the creek and keep those water temperatures below 68 degrees so that salmon can survive during the summer. Here we are at the Colbert on Tanaina on 21st. Looks like we have some spawning salmon. I've been out here for 10 years and in that time, you know, we have salmon spawning in Crystal Springs, which hadn't happened for a long time. There's people still alive who remember fishing in Johnson Creek for salmon, remember large salmon runs, and the fact that we're now getting coho carcasses up in Gresham and starting to see some of those returns and we're seeing improving water quality. I think people can, in a really short time, see the benefits of our actions and that should inspire future investment and further restoration. So you know community-based science, citizen science, participatory science, it's got a lot of different names that it goes by, that's become really popular. These are folks that for whatever their reasons are, social motivation, environmental motivation, just wanting to learn more about something they're interested in, people get more engaged, they get a stronger sense of place, and they become better stewards. Now when you release them, this is important, they will be a little disoriented when you let them go after being held like this. So what you want to do is you want to place them on your hand and let them fly away when it's convenient for them. You have an American public in general that in some ways they've been led to believe that 
you know, science over here, it's hard, nobody understands it, it's, it's done by these people in white coats who are totally disconnected from the real world, right? And so to get this idea that, oh, this is how it works, this is what the scientific process is, and here are the questions we want to answer. You're trying to find something new and see what's out there. So the only way you're going to really do that is by getting into the water, attending a survey, being cold, getting wet, falling down, getting up. But I think really it's immersing yourself into the elements, immersing yourself into that water to feel that cold. Really, it's for me, it lets me know I'm alive, especially in the winter. You breathe that cold air and you see your steam come out of your mouth and you feel that cold and it goes down to your bones into your soul and that's when you know you're alive it's like man you know just endure a little bit and then you go back inside and, and you're happy for your home or that heat that shelter and you're grateful for it <laughs> I do think that Johnson Creek has a lot of hope for restoring. You know, the fact that there's so many people in the watershed and so many eyes on the creek has had a negative impact historically, but it also means that when we have a positive impact, there's that many more people who can see and appreciate it. 